This program's a little longer and a little more complicated than the ones we've seen before, so I'm going to spend a few minutes trying to uh, walk you through it. Let's have a look at some of the declarations first. We're looking at the file here in VI with line numbering turned on. Line 16 is declaring the uh, file descriptor for the input file, the configuration file from which we'll read the list of file names. And then line 17 is declaring the descriptor for the output file where we'll write our report to. Line 18 is just a buffer to hold file names in. Line 19 is a stat structure. We're going to stat each file, uh, partly to make sure that it actually exists and also to make sure that it's a regular file and not, for example, a directory. Uh, line 21, we are declaring a buffer to read our events into. The size of that buffer is defined up here at line 12. It's big enough to hold 100 events. Coming down here to line 27, We've got a two-dimensional array of char here, but I, it's better to think of it as a just a, an array of uh, path names called watched names. This is going to be indexed using the watch descriptor. It's uh, the way that we have of associating the watch descriptors with the names of the files that they correspond to. Scroll down a little. Here's our call to inotify init. Pretty straightforward. Here we open the configuration file. Notice we're using uh, fopen. This is the buffered I/O that we're using. The configuration file is called monitor.conf, and, and we're opening it for reading. Uh, if that fails, for example, if the file doesn't exist, uh, there's not much point in carrying on. Uh, so we would print out an error message, and then we exit. Then at line 38, we go into a loop reading lines one by one from the config file with fgets, reading them into the watch name buffer. Now fgets retains the new line character at the end of the string at line 40. We're simply getting rid of that. Here we stat the file whose name we've just read in. If that fails, well, I suppose the most likely reason is that the file doesn't exist. Um, in which case we simply print out an error message, but we continue. We loop round, in fact, at that point onto line 38 uh, and try the next file name. Let me scroll down a little further. Assuming the stats succeeded, we test here to see if the file is a regular file. Here's one of those test macros we looked at earlier in the lesson. If it is, we add it to our watch here. This is the name of the file, and this is the mask. These are the event types we're interested in learning about. Modification and deletion. And then here at line 54, we record the name of the file in the watch names array indexed by the watch descriptor. These are allocated, as I said, they're allocated in turn 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Now we have to do this because when the event is delivered back to us, it doesn't actually tell us what the name of the file is that the event relates to, but it does tell us what the watch descriptor is. We come down here at line 57. If the test for a regular file up at line 47 failed, so it's probably a directory, the thing that we're looking at here. So we simply ignore it. So when we get down to line 60, um, all our watches are in place. I'll scroll down to the end now. So here we go into an infinite loop. We read from the inotify instance there. That read will block until some event is delivered to us. Um, it may deliver more than one event. It probably won't. But we are willing there to read up to buff size bytes into this buffer. Now we cater for the possibility of having more than one event in this buffer by having this inner loop. Here this point of P is hopping down the event buffer. We have to actually manage the pointer arithmetic explicitly 
You see that in 972 there, because, as I explained, the records are of variable length. Anyway, each time round here, we cast P to be a, um, an iNotify event structure, and that allows us to reach into it to find its mask um, and its watch descriptor value. So we test to see if the IN modify bit is set in that mask, and if it is, we print out a message to say that the file was modified. Similarly, if the IN delete self bit is set in the mask, we print out a message to say that it was deleted. Uh, notice again, we're getting the file name by indexing into that array that we built with the watch descriptor coming back from the event. Now this program doesn't terminate, uh, at least not of its own accord. It's in a, we're in an infinite loop here. So we are flushing the buffered output out each time to make absolutely certain that it has actually arrived in the file. Well, that's the end of the code. So now let's take a look at it in action. So we'll begin by building the program in the usual way. And now let's try running it. We don't have to get very far because, of course, we don't have monitor.conf. So that open fails. And here we're seeing the error message reported by the program. So let's create ourselves a config file. And we'll put in it etc host which is a regular file a couple of files in the current directory foo and bar i'll create those in a second and then to exercise some of the error checking let's put in the name of a file that doesn't exist and the name of something that certainly does exist slash etc but is a directory and not a regular file so we'll save that we need to create the files foo and bar something like that. And now we'll try running the program again. Uh, this time I'll run it in the background for a reason you'll see in a moment. And you'll see it's happy with adding etc hosts. It's got that added on watch descriptor one. Foo is added on descriptor two. Bar is added on descriptor three. It has correctly reported that the stat on XYZZY fails. The file doesn't exist. And it's also figured out that uh, slash etc is not a regular file, so it's being ignored. Now the program is running in the background so that I can now do a, a tail minus f on the output file, monitor.out. The file should have been created, but be empty at the moment. Uh, and indeed, that seems to be the case. This tail minus f is just, just sitting there, uh, reporting nothing at all. So let's hop over to this other window here and uh, do something to modify these files. For example, if I edit etc hosts, I need to do this as a uh, root. And well, here's a line I put in when I was checking this out. So I might as well just delete that again. And as I write the file out at this point, if you notice what happens in the yellow window, it reports that the file was modified. Uh, why does it report it twice? To be honest, I don't know. It has to be something to do with the way in which VI is updating the file. We'll quit from that. What else can we try? Uh, let's try removing the file bar. And it reports that bar was deleted. Uh, let's try appending something to the file foo. And you'll see in the left-hand window there that it reports that foo was modified. This time, we only see the message once. Now let's hop over into the left-hand window. We'll terminate the tail. Of course, the um, monitor program is still running in the background there. We can have a look at uh, monitor.out just to, to verify that it really is being written. And because the uh, the program is still running, if we hop over to this window, 
and we say modify foo again, just repeat that command. And then we come back over here and cat the file. If you see, look closely, you'll see that a line has been added. So this monitor program is running in the background. It is behaving in many ways as a daemon monitoring the file system for the changes as specified in its config file and then reporting them to uh, its output file, which we might think of as a log file. All very good.